after all of these videos I've recorded, even with my new camera, I'm still like, is this? The tripod is level, but is the camera? I don't know. Shout out to all of my patrons, especially the new patrons and anyone who upgraded their patronship membership. I don't know what the word is. I know maybe this 20 seconds you think is too long at the beginning of the video, but I do not care because these people are really holding me down. So shout out to y'all. I love you. Hey, hi, hello, welcome, or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess, and we are here for a wrap up. I feel like the last time I let y'all get off a little too easy, but it is now June, so bear with me while I spiral, because how are we halfway through 2022? All right, so it is now, uh, I'm literally recording this on June 1st, 2022, to talk about everything I read in May. I feel like my race, my May started off really strong and this month is also, May felt the longest this year, which is a good thing for me because I feel like time is moving too fast. But I started out May pretty strong with a lot of romances that I enjoyed. And then I did kind of dip my toe back into SSF towards the end of the month and the results varied. Um, some of the books I won't talk about as much if they were in a vlog, I'll just link that vlog or put it in the cards up above because I have already talked about them. And so that's that. But you know how I did a TBR? Yes, me, if you missed it, I'll link that as well. I made a TBR for June because I'm trying to read physical books that I own. So I made an ambitious TBR. I picked 10 books that were like my definite must get to. And then I had like seven wishful thinking even though 10 books is already wishful thinking and um while i haven't responded to comments under that video yet i saw some of you haters not believing in me that i couldn't read all those books y'all might be right but why i'm bringing that up in this video is because i may have had a little extra time at the end of may and read three of those books already that were like my must reads so i kind of cheated my tbr so when you see them at the towards the end of this wrap up don't be surprised don't be coming for me okay i had extra time to read sometimes in a month i don't really read a lot and i read these okay so that means that i have more room to pick from my seven extra books and i have another book that I will try to slide in, if not June, definitely July. The sponsor of today's video who sent me this book, yes, by William Gates himself, by Bill Gates, How to Prevent the Next Pandemic. I know, it's like the next one. Aren't we still in one? Yes, <laughs> yes. It depends on who you ask though, because some people think the personal pan pizza is over, but this is his new book about how to prevent the next personal pan pizza. And with the social media talking about monkeypox, this might be super relevant. This actually isn't super long. I thought it was gonna be longer without the like notes and glossary. It's about 250 pages, which isn't bad at all for a nonfiction. The plan of this book, the purpose of this book is to ensure that we don't experience a response um, to an, the next emerging disease like we did to COVID. This book is hopeful. He's talking about how progress is possible. We don't have to go through something like this again to lose the amount of people that we've lost, the economic, um, job, financial toll, all of those things. It's been, it's affected almost every aspect of life and we don't have to go through that again if we have a plan. So this book essentially is a plan and each chapter has like a step that can be taken to help prevent this happening again. This also is not just about preventing a future pandemic, but in general, how to increase the health, well-being of people worldwide. So this is something we all need. Now, obviously me reading it, I am not a world leader, but I'm still very interested to see what he lays out in this. Like, what is the plan? Is it all at like government levels? Um, but I'm sure that this could be helpful to people in healthcare and people in different industries. Learn more about this in the plan at Gates Notes. I have a link in the description and in a pinned comment that you can click on to go get some more information. But thank you so much for the publisher for sending me this book. I think the first like five books I read were in a vlog, so I'll just go through them quickly and tell you my thoughts. Briefly, I read Gallant by V.E. Schwab, which 
I don't know if it's technically young adult or middle grade. It felt more middle grade. I don't know if it's like gothic mystery kind of horror. I was very underwhelmed with it. I gave it two and a half stars. I think like atmosphere was there. Um, the writing was beautiful, but there was like nothing else. I didn't really get a lot from the characters, from the story. It just <sighs> very, there's not just not a lot to talk about. It's short and there just wasn't a lot of substance for me to be mad or to love. So Ah, on that one. Very sad though because I love both the US and the UK edition of the book. They have illustrations but I didn't buy it and it's good because I did not love that book. I then read Cups of You by Carmen Lee which is an indie romance and I really thought this was super cute. Um, I gave it a 3.5 but essentially she's coming back to the small town that she has left and um, she ends up falling in love with the owner of a coffee shop there. She hasn't lived there in a lot of time and it's just super cute and I wanted just a little bit more out of the character so I could be even more invested in the relationship but I still really enjoyed it and I think there may be a second one um, after this and I want to read that one as well and I would read more from Carmen Lee and I think that was just on Kindle Unlimited. I read the boyfriend material which by now y'all should know that I loved love love it was included also in my romance fan cast video i'll link that if you haven't seen it but this is by alexis hall and this was set in london and it is fake dating and you have one person who's like very put together has their life together and the other person's a hot mess and um it is a gay romance and i love them so much i love luke and oliver i just died i thought it was funny i loved it i love their their growth and their vulnerableness to each other and their friends. I love the whole thing. It was a five out of five for me. Highly recommend. Then I went into The Heart Principle. I also think this was in my vlog. This was the third and final one in the, what's it called? The Kish Quos, the Kish, the Kiss Quotient series. So this was the third one and probably my least, my least favorite of the three but I still really enjoy it. I like Helen Huang's writing and you know this group of characters that we've seen repeating in these three books um, but this one definitely focused a lot more on you know the baggage the tragedies in their life more than I think it focused on the romance so I know I had heard those complaints when it first came out so I still enjoyed it um, because I knew that going in I think I would have been more disappointed if I thought it was going to be more like you know the kiss quotient or uh the bride test but I still enjoyed it but it is a little bit more heavy than the other ones in the series so I gave that one four stars then I don't know if this one was also in there but I read Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma this started out so strong but towards the end really started to dip for me so I gave it a 3.25 but I what I loved about this book and what I need more of is these Indian aunties giving me life they were so funny just i love them i love the parents like i just i love the indian aunties but she essentially is trying to buy this house from her dad and he is a like a cardiologist who doesn't believe in like true love but they should they're both gonna basically pretend to be dating each other fi for financial reasons and she just was so irritating sometimes and i never really like really grew to like him so like there was just some points that didn't line up for you like I was missing um but I got a lot of humor from like the family and all of that but like the two the two main characters I didn't vibe with as much so I couldn't be as invested in their love story but it still was really funny I would read another romance by Nisha Sharma but um yeah if you can point my way towards some hilarious aunties please let me know in the comments I think those might have been the last ones out of that vlog. My vlogging has kind of fallen to the wayside because I went to Ireland and I have a bunch of footage from Ireland and just like, I just don't know. I have to go through it. It's so much work. But anywho, I read me. Words are hard today. Let me, let me pause. I read Meet Cute Club by Jack Harbin and I gave this a 3.5. I thought it was very cute. It's a really short uh, romance. We have Jordan. Um, he lives in this little town. He has a, a romance book club and then I think his name is Max. Is it Max? No. Rex is this new boy in town who kind of, uh, Jordan I think 
no he meets Jordan at a bookstore and kind of teases him for buying these romance books but then he comes to the book club obviously it's a romance um and Rex has some issues with family and Jordan um I think he I forgot what happened he like lost his parents so he just had his grandmother who was super cute I think that I wanted a little bit more like a little longer so that I could grow to know them a little bit better because from just like the surface I did like them but I wasn't like oh my god I love you guys and Rex's stuff with it being so short I felt like took up a pretty good chunk of the book and I would love more of like the book club interaction but it still was super sweet very cute this was my first book I think from Jack Harbin so I definitely will read more um and it's just a very cute cover so I'll definitely be doing that then I read this is where I get confused because I think this is what I read in the vlog footage that has yet to be aired so I don't even know will people even watch the vlog I don't even know but this is me getting back into my SFF bag so the first one I read was one of the releases that came out this year that was on my anticipated list and it is Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes this is a sci-fi so I don't know if it's sci-fi thriller sci-fi horror I'm no genre connoisseur but it is a science fiction book and it's set um in the future where essentially there is this ship that was like a big cruise liner but it was a cruise liner in space and so our main character is on a ship she's like the captain she has her crew which I think is of four people they're at the end of a job and they're um heading to their rendezvous point to like go back to earth is it earth I think or wherever they live and they get a they hear like an emergency signal and they're like what is going on out here because they're pretty far out in space they go see what it is and it's this luxury liner so the thing about this big cruise ship space cruise ship is that it was supposed to have this year-long voyage and this was its maiden journey and six months into the trip it went silent they stopped getting updates they didn't know where it was and it's just been lost for 20 years and they stumble across the ship so then it's like um should we just pretend we didn't see that or are we going on and it is a book so what do they do they go on the ship and whoo mess chaos horror terrifyingness ensues i really really liked this this was um from our main character i don't remember her name but it was in first person which was very interesting i thought it would have been in third but i didn't mind the third person i think that when the dialogue like the conversations were going on since we were in first person you could just like really understand her and her perspective like there were times where she was getting frustrated with crew, crew members and like people and you could just like from the interactions I was like I'm frustrated because you're frustrated like I could tell how frustrated you're being I don't know I thought it was that those the dialogue was really well well written we also get flashbacks to a time after they found the ship so you're trying to figure out what happened and then you learn about her backstory because she experienced something really bad happening to her when she was younger um and that affects obviously what's happening now but it is I thought it was really good I thought the pacing was great it read really fast I really enjoyed it some of the imagery that was described I could see I think definitely if you enjoyed the movie Ghost Ship that you would enjoy this book because that's literally what I was thinking of when I heard the pitch for this I will say my biggest disappointment I guess is towards the end when you're you're figuring out what went wrong on the ship like why it went missing why it's been out here and no one has found it I I was like I mean I guess you know like I don't I don't wasn't like <gasps> it just was like okay I just didn't love the resolution um of that but Overall, I give it four stars. It was really enjoyable and I will read more from S.A. Barnes faux show. So to continue in my sci-fi bag, the only person I've ever heard talk about this book is Angela from Literature Science Alliance and it is called Catfishing on Catnet by Naomi Kreitzer. Literally never heard of this before. I think it's just a duology. So it's a young adult science fiction. Our main character, I think her name is Steph is lives with her mom but they're like constantly on the move so they're always on the move to avoid her dad who her mom said burned down their house so he's super dangerous and her mom works in tech so she can work you know from anywhere but anytime maybe she feels like they've been too exposed or been somewhere too long they move so they just moved to a new town and at this school Steph happens to make a friend in school and she also is a part of this online group so it makes me think of like discord or reddit but 
um, this online website and people are in different little groups. Um, they've kind of been sectioned off by, you know, like the algorithm. And she has these friends in there. Of course, they all have their screen names. So I don't really know who each other are. Um, and there's an AI in this story. A, and I love an AI, a good AI character in a story. But her mom gets sick and has to go to the hospital. And of course, the hospital is asking questions like, uh, when's her birthday, what's her insurance, all this information that they usually don't give because they're trying to stay under the radar. And so her mom is like, you need to go, you need to run from this hospital, he's going to find us. And it just goes off from there and she has to really rely on her friends in the um, online community, but she doesn't know about her real life new friend, if you know, she's gonna be able to open up to her. And it's just so precious, it is so sweet. It is really good found family with the online uh, group and I love the AI and there's a little adventuring in there and there were moments where it was getting tense and I was like oh oh no what is gonna happen and the way the first one ended I was like I want to go into the second one my library did not have the second one so I requested they buy it and last night I got a notification that they bought it and even though it is not on my TBR for July I'm gonna read it I'm gonna read it so I really 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 enjoyed it, it was just so fun it was just great. I gave it four stars. So I'm definitely gonna read the second one, which is called Chaos on Catnet, I think. Catnet is basically like their internet group or server, whatever. I don't know. If you would like a, a fun young adult science fiction mystery kind of story, you should read it. Um, I did go back into my romance bag and finally got to the one that a lot of my patrons recommended and I have heard people talking about and it is Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. This is a sapphic romance that I have been seeing get a lot of hype and I overall really enjoyed it. If I was being technical I gave it like a 3.75 because of some issues but essentially we have Delilah who was from Oregon but moved to New York City to try to make it. She is trying to really get her art in galleries. She's a photographer. And then the other gal is Claire, who is in that same town in Oregon, knew Delilah when they were growing up, but they weren't friends. So Delilah has a stepsister who they are not friendly. It gave me like Cinderella vibes because she doesn't like her stepsister or her stepmom and her dad passed away. And her mom and um so for some reason her stepmom wants her to be the photographer for all the wedding events and her stepsister's wedding so she goes back home and is reunited obviously she hasn't seen her stepsister in years and then her stepsister's friends iris and claire and claire is immediately attracted to her and didn't realize who she was yada 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 it's a romance eventually you know they fall for each other and i did really like their romance um i thought they were really cute both described i saw in my head i was like okay it's giving hot girls love it i um both hotties great there are times when they were together like nudging each other's foot or when they were cuddled in bed all these cute things so cute claire has a daughter and um the, her daughter's interactions with delilah so precious here's my thing because okay back to the daughter because usually in a romance i love when a man um, comes in and is like so sweet and like taking care of a child that's not his but this one was obviously a woman and I still loved it because she was so cool like her daughter was at, is at that age where she doesn't want to be bothered with mom and mom's not cool but Delilah obviously is like cooler because she's more like black like combat boots and tattoos and stuff and she just had this like bond with her daughter and I just was like oh, so precious but what took this away from being a five star because I could have seen it being a favorite is that Delilah sometimes was getting on my nerves. I was like, girl, grow up, okay? Like, I understand you did not like your stepmother or your stepsister, but like, maybe if y'all talking more to her stepsister than her stepmother, had some conversations or talked, like y'all, you're being a little childish right now. Also, one of the friends of her stepsister was named Iris. One, she annoyed me. I just really didn't love her personality. And they shortened her name to Riss. They would call her Riss. Her name is Iris. I was like, just say Iris. Like <laughs> saying Riss is so ridiculous. And then in Claire, since she had her daughter, she has baby daddy drama because he's like in and out of the picture. And then it's like, does she still have feelings for him? And of course, you know, Delilah's gonna see that. And she's like, oh, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, I don't want to deal with this. It felt like all of their, their baggage was taking up too much space in the romance. Like I wanted, like I understand that being there that builds their character, explains their history and stuff. 
but I don't want it to overshadow the romance and sometimes I felt like that was the forefront and then there also was drama with her stepsister and the, her fiance because her friends didn't like him and so I'm like there's all these things going on but I want to focus on these two I wanted more time of, with them together so that's my that's my complaint I still really enjoyed it though the steam was steaming it was giving I loved it so I will definitely read more in this series um this is my first from this author and I obviously need more sapphic romance so if you have any good recommendations let me know down below the final three that I cheated well it's technically four but I dnf one but it's not here on the list three that were on my June TBR I already read a book of night by Holly Black there's really not much to say I have to film a review for my patrons because it was the book they they picked for me to read and review and I'm just like what do I say because it felt like this was the first draft of the story and then they just published it. Like it gave nothing. So that's it. That's all I what did I give it? I don't even think I gave it a rating. I mean, I feel like I would give it a one but I feel like a one is like a hatred and I don't have anything to hate because it was so bland. Do I give it a zero? I mean, it gave nothing. I don't know. I read The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah, another anticipated release this year um, by Orbit, I believe. So adult and it is Middle Eastern inspired. Chelsea grew up in Kuwait. So I was very excited about this. I love the Dave Abad trilogy. And so this was another adult. Um, I think it's the start of a trilogy set in the Middle East. So the setting was very familiar. A lot of the terms I was really excited. Um, I think if you like the Dave Abad trilogy, then this may be a good one for you. But I ended up being disappointed with it, which makes me so sad. I feel like it now it is a debut so I'm taking that into consideration and it is the first book so I'm going to read the second book especially how this ended but it just didn't feel developed enough and also it nothing was super complex like I don't feel like we really got a lot of the characters like we got them but I don't feel like any of them really were super developed we had three point of views and I feel like that's not that many but even maybe one less and we could have at least focused on developing those two more I don't know what I don't know what to solve it better like the world was beautiful and I think that was one of the most fleshed out developed things but the plot was a little meandering and it wasn't super long but it it started to feel long after the midway point and so I didn't really have a favorite character I had someone that I liked more than all the people and they weren't even a main character um and I had some people I disliked, but not even like, oh, I hate you. I just didn't have a lot of emotion either way towards the characters. But the way the second I paused at the middle and I put it down for about a week or so, picked it back up and started reading and, you know, was back into it. But I still didn't feel more attachment, but I did get through the story pretty fast. And especially like that last 50 to 100 pages, of course, it was ramping up. And then what seems like is going to be the setup. Uh, for the next one very intrigued by that so I'm definitely gonna give that one a try so this was just a three star to me again it is a debut in the first of a series so I just hope it can feel more adult and feel more complicated and complex we get more like political machinations and more like we get to know the characters better in the second one I'm hopeful and then maybe you know that'll turn the tide for the trilogy but I was I was let down with that one and then lastly from my June TBR I read The Hunting Wives which was one of my book of the month books I got last year it is by May Cobb this was was it a thriller mystery I don't know it was something like that and essentially this lady moves from uh Chicago down to Texas because she wants to basically you know slow down enjoy life with her husband and her son but then she gets bored being a housewife essentially and she's trying to you know blog and do stuff online but she's like wait I wanted to get away from the fast life but now I'm kind of bored and she gets involved with these rich women in the town who are nothing but mess and drama and she gets herself in the middle of a very sticky situation and this was something I think I read in a day I listened to the audiobook um fully through it and it was just enjoyable it was fun like it was mm, 
it wasn't uh, 3.5 enough to round out to a four so I just rounded down to a three like it was it was a it was quick and fun easy read I mean of course in these kind of books I really ever liked characters and I really the main character which just seemed so dumb to me I'm like girl come on let's have some sense let's have some sense um and then of course the ladies a mess and I will say that I had I did at the end I was like oh okay you kind of tricked me um I thought we were going with this way and then you kind of you kind of you kind of tripped it up but I see that I see that and um but I feel like it took a little while to get to what the main mystery of the story was and but after that then it kind of was like you know went pretty fast so it wasn't anything I don't know mystery and thrillers for me are hard to be like overly remarkable it's even hard to get like a four because I just have to be like wow 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 um so it was good you know it was enjoyable messy rich women foolishness just really not much else to say about that but you know it's not one I'll be keeping definitely gonna put that in the little free library but glad I read it and I did try to read Liberty um which was another one of those book of the month picks and after 50 percent 15 percent I just was like feeling it wasn't for me so I took I actually took four off of my June TBR <laughs> am I a genius I'm not but overall I had a really successful reading month in May and I obviously if you saw my June to be up TBR have some ambitious books that I'm trying to read one is really chunky and I haven't started it yet I'm very nervous <laughs> but um yeah I just hope I can get through those because I would love to read some more of my physical books and you know I'm going to be unhauling I'm going to film like an unhaul kind of vlog because I, I can't do it all at once like it's just going to be kind of like me getting rid of them over time before we leave. I don't know when we're leaving. The military is a mess. But that was my wrap up for me. So let me know if you read any of these, especially if you read the Thart, the Thart, especially if you read Book of Night or The Stardust Thief, please tell me your thoughts because I just need to know. And I'm just so mad because I think that I got a special edition of the Book of Night in fairy, the Fairy Loot Adult box. And like, I feel like everyone's trying to sell it. So maybe I'll just have to keep it for display. Even though I'm, I, what was that? Yikes. I mean, it was like ninth house, but more boring and less weird gross scenes. I don't know, man. Aye, aye, aye. But per usual, if you didn't read any of these or whatever, just tell me what you read in May. How did your May go? I hope everyone is reading things that they love and aren't in a reading slump. But if you are, don't feel bad. Sometimes you just need to take a break from reading or maybe change up your genre, your age category, the kind of medium you're reading through. If you, you know, maybe sick of physical books, maybe give audiobooks a try. But that was it. So thank you again for the sponsor of today's video. Again, check out that link to learn more at Gates Notes. And um, all of the books that I list, talked about today's video will be listed in my description. But I think that is it for me. I need to go feed baby and myself. But give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you would like to. Um, mom, 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 stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreen. And I'll see you on my next one. Bye.